Good morning. And a happy Sunday to everyone. It's so good to see all of you here this morning and those visiting us online. It's always good to come together. So we're going to be starting off with I claim a blessing. It is yours to claim today. I, oh, I, oh, I, I claim a blessing. I, oh, I, oh, I, I claim a blessing. In the morning when I get out of bed, I claim a blessing. I claim a blessing. I claim a blessing. Before I even lift my head, I claim a blessing. I claim a blessing. I claim a blessing. This is how I start the day, knowing good is on the way. I am claiming perfect health, love and laughter, friends and wealth. In the morning when I get out of bed, I claim a blessing, I claim a blessing, I claim a blessing. Before I even lift my head, I claim a blessing, I claim a blessing, I claim a blessing. With conviction undeterred and power of the spoken word. Take my life and redefine Break the shackles of my mind In the morning when I get out of bed I claim a blessing I claim a blessing I claim a blessing Before I even lift my head I claim a blessing I claim a blessing I claim a blessing I lift my thoughts to higher ground, knowing miracles are all around. Each day unfolds as, as it should, when I'm focusing on the good. Life is filled with opportunity, I wonder what good is coming to me, yeah. I claim a blessing, I claim it, ooh, I claim a blessing. I claim it, ooh, I claim a blessing. I claim it, ooh, I claim a blessing. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to Unity of Daytona Beach, a positive path for spiritual living. I'm Reverend Teresa Curry, and it's my great joy to welcome each and one of you here with us this morning, as well as everyone that's joining us online. So before we begin, I just want to say, who woke up this morning and said, I expect good and I'm claiming a blessing? Was that your first thought? Yes. Well, it could be, right? It could be. <laughs> We're claiming that blessing right now. Please join me this morning as we speak on brilliance. I am a radiant channel of divine light. Jesus encouraged his followers spiritual growth when he told them that they would do even greater works than he had done. The Bible says we are made in the image and likeness of God. Knowing this, who are we not to shine? We are divine. An incredible beauty emerges when people follow their hearts to do what they love. The closer all people come to expressing their highest potential, the more they radiate a brilliance that encourages everyone else to shine too. I am inspired by this knowledge. As I allow divine energy to surge through me, I become a radiant conduit of divine light, ablaze with creative potential. I take one step at a time toward my best brilliant life. Today's daily word is inspired from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse 15. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, 
and gives it light to all in the house. Let's take a breath in together. Oh, please pray with me. We are indeed a radiant channel of divine light that we came here this day to express goodness in a greater way than ever before, knowing our divine potential created in the image and likeness of God. Who are we not to shine our lights this day? Take another breath in with me. We are now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge your presence and your power, O blessed spirit, and your divine wisdom now erase our human limitations and from the pure substance of love bring into manifestation our world according to your perfect law. And because we allow that law and align with that law, so it is and so we let it be. Amen. Please join me now as we speak our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So this song is for all of you out there that have a great big bundle of potentiality just stored up within you. Sing out loud. I am a promise. I am a possibility. I am a promise uh, with a capital P. I am a great big bundle of potentiality and I am learning to hear God's voice and I'm trying to make the right choice I am a promise to be anything God wants me to be I am a promise I am a possibility I am a promise I read the capital T. I am a great big bundle of potentiality. And I am learning to hear God's voice. And I'm trying to make the right choice. I am a promise to be anything God wants me to be. I can go anywhere God wants me to go. I can be anything God wants me to be. I can climb the high mountains. I can cross the white sea. I am a great big promise, you see. I am a promise. I am a possibility. I am a promise. I read a capital P. I am a great big bundle of potentiality and I am learning to hear God's voice and I'm trying to make the right choice I am a promise to be anything God wants me to be I am a promise to be anything God wants me to be Please join with me in our statement of faith. There is only one presence and one power in the universe 
and in my life, God the good omnipotent. There's that time in our service where I have the opportunity to welcome anyone who is here with us this morning for the first time. So if we have any guests or visitors or anyone's here for the first time, would you mind just raising your hand so our ushers can bring you a packet of information? I think we have one right over here. Welcome. We're so grateful that you chose to be with us this morning. And now, friends, we have quite a few announcements. I just want to say that we are indeed a vibrant spiritual community, and we have a lot going on. First of all, I just want to say that there is a woman that's visually impaired that is interested in coming to our church that needs transportation. She lives in the South Daytona area, and if you can help out with that at all, please see Carol Evans. Maybe Carol can raise her hand, and Carol will be out in the lobby after the service as they were doing some other things. So if that speaks to you at all and you live in that area and you're willing to give somebody a ride, just please see Carol. Also, too, we all, as you all have seen, we have our gratitude fall photo booth going on out there. You see those pictures? <laughs> So if you haven't done so, take the opportunity to go by and have your picture taken. Our amazing youth is helping out with this program. And this is going to be part of our Gratitude Sunday coming forth that's been going on in that service on November 21st. So that's all part of it. So it's fun. Go, in, go enjoy. Go play a little bit. And now our wonderful Dan Kalis has some information to share with us on our upcoming food drive. Uh, good morning. Um, one of my favorite holidays is Thanksgiving, and as we get a chance to become more aware of our many blessings, uh, there are some folks in our community who could use our help next month so that they could have a better Thanksgiving. Our outreach team will be assisting Family Renew with Thanksgiving food. Family Renew is a few blocks south of our church and has been around since 1989. They assist homeless families by providing housing on site for six months or longer so families can then move on to more permanent uh, housing. They currently have 13 families staying with them, with most being headed by single parents. Our goal is to provide non-perishable food for the 13 families. We also would like to collect money for gift cards so families can buy a turkey or other items. You can help us by providing non-perishable food for one of the 13 families, or you can team up with some other congregants to help one family. You can also help by making a monetary donation. We hope to raise $325 so that each family could have a $25 gift certificate. If you are writing a check, please note on it that it is for Family Renew Thanksgiving. Uh, we'll make it out to Unity, but Family Renew Thanksgiving in the little part on the bottom. And for cash donations, please write that on an envelope. I will be in the foyer before and after service today and the next four Sundays to accept donations or answer any questions. We will collect food and donations for this project through Sunday, November 21st. Please see me to sign up if you're interested in helping one of these families. Thank you. We got this, don't we? This is, this is a generous, abundant community. He's got that. We can meet that goal. Also, too, we are, as we, uh, Wendy Foreman shared with us last week, we are now accepting um, applications for anyone who is interested in the service of being on the board of trustees. Wendy Foreman is in the back. If you want to stand up and raise your hand, she's our, our nominating committee chairperson for that. So if you have any interest in that or spirits nudging you just a little bit, see Wendy, Carol George, myself, or Deborah Zioli for more information on that. And we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Also, too, November 11th, we will be having our remembrance service. That's such a sweet, sweet service, dear ones. That's where we take the opportunity to acknowledge any one of our, any of our loved ones that have passed on from this physical world. So out in the lobby, you'll see that we will have slips available that if you would like to honor your loved ones or have your, honor, have your loved ones honored during that service, you can write their name on that slip of paper, and their names will be read aloud during that service. So that's out in the lobby area as well. So that's no Thursday, November 11th at 6 p.m. And then after that, November 13th, how's your calendar? Getting full, isn't it? <laughs> Mine is. November 13th is our church 
say picnic. We're gonna, we have a sign-up sheet out in the lobby for that as well. It's gonna be similar to what we did last year. It will be a boxed lunch because we're still you know, working our way through this COVID situation. So all food items will be contained for each individual. So there's a sign-up sheet out in the lobby and you'll have some choices to make. Our wonderful Carol Evans will be out there to help guide you through that process. So that's November 13th and it's gonna be at uh, noon, starting at noon at Sunrise Park in Holly Hill where we've always had our past picnics. So please join us, it'll be some fun, fun in fellowship. And now also too, our wonderful Audrey Lloyd is here representing the prayer chaplain. So if you should have a prayer request or you wanna share some joy with Miss Audrey, please feel free to do so after service. Thank you all. I will leave this world as it is, go inside to find my God. I will leave this world as it is, go inside to find my God. I will leave this world as it is, go inside to find my God. I will leave this world as it is, go inside to find my God. Inside there is peace, Inside there is joy, inside there is more than enough. Inside there is peace, inside there is joy, inside there is sacred love. I will leave this day as it is. Go inside to find my God. I will leave this day as it is. Go inside to find my God. Inside there is peace. Inside there is joy. Inside there is more than enough. Inside there is peace. Inside there is joy. Inside there is sacred love. I will leave this life as it is. Go inside to find my God, I will leave this life as it is, go inside to find my God, go inside to find my God, I'll go inside to find my God. So let us take this time together now to go inside to find our God. And so I invite you to close your eyes. Get quiet. We begin to take some deep breaths in, inhaling deeply through your nose, exhaling out.
what a gift, what a gift to go inside to find our God. So if you choose in these next few moments we take the gift of just stepping aside from the human condition for a little while and we go within Continue to watch your breath. The mind likes to wander and that's okay. There's nothing for you to do. Just making a choice to go within. Take a deep breath in with me. Release that breath. We go within to find our God. Go inside to find my God. Our soul's longing. To be in communion with our God. To know the truth of ourselves, the truth of one another. That we have been created in the image and likeness of God. God expressions each and every one of us. We are divine. the longing of our souls to know at a greater and greater level that we are one with our God. Never separate, never alone. And as divine, that knowing, a knowing, That we were born in original goodness. Original goodness. We are not broken. We are not flawed. We are not deficient. We are divine. deep breath in with me. Release that breath. Many things in our human condition that do not serve our highest and best, but the truth of each and every one of us is goodness. Goodness. breath in with me. Release that breath. Go inside to find your God. And be immersed in the truth of the original goodness that you are as we take that into silence now.
take a deep breath in together. Release that breath and come back to this place in this space where we go inside to find our God. At any point, at any time, we remember to find our peace, to find our joy, to find our love, to remember our original goodness. We go inside to find our God. Take a deep breath in with me. Release that breath. And as you're ready, you can open your eyes. So it is. Amen. of spirit on earth and who you are and all you do is a blessing to the world you are the heart you are the hands you are the voice of spirit on earth and who you are and all you do is a blessing to the world. We are the heart, we are the hands, we are the voice of spirit on earth. And who we are and all we do is a blessing to the world. I am the heart, I am the hand, I am the voice of spirit on earth. And who I am and all I do is a blessing to the world. I'm a blessing to the world. I'm a blessing to the There. Well, it was, but, but not an entry ramp. Uh, I wasn't thinking too clearly as I jumped that fence and shuffled down the hillside to the roadway. I put out my thumb. The cars were whizzing by at 80 miles an hour, four lanes wide. It wasn't long before the police came along. They slowed down and went by me and hit me with their loudspeaker. Get the heck off the interstate. You can't hitchhike here. 
Well, I looked back up the embankment, and at that moment, I saw a hawk fly over. I thought to myself, a strange sight to see a, a hawk in this city. And then I thought, well, it'll take the priest a while to loop back around, so I put my thumb out again. That's when I saw this little yellow car over in that far lane, and he started cutting over one lane, two lanes, dodging in and out of traffic, three lanes, four lanes, before screeching to a stop right at my feet on the shoulder. The passenger side window came down, and the man leaned over and said, get in, son. Well, I noticed right away that he was Native American. His long silver hair pulled back in a ponytail. As I settled down, he looked at me and, and smiled, and I saw something uh, I'll never forget. His eyes were like pools, deep pools of light. I thought to myself, they say that the eyes are the window on the soul. Well, this man's soul must be like a lighthouse beacon. As he took off, he said, you want to tell me about it, son? I said, tell you about what? He said, hitchhiking on the side of the interstate? Good way to get killed or, or arrested. I said, yeah, the police, he said, I saw it. That's why I pulled over. Now it was him looking into my eyes. Blue, he said, but I, I can barely make them out through the fog. In fact, son, I'm surprised you can see it all. Well, I, I knew there was no actual fog over my eyes, but I took his meaning. Well, I haven't been seeing too straight lately. I, I've been kind of wandering around in a dream, which is what took you over that fence and down the embankment. Yeah, it was. Where are you headed, he said. And I said, Florida, I, I guess. And he said, Florida, the land of Midwestern fantasies. They turned to me again and pierced me with that, those eyes made of light. But now his, his smile was gone. His thoughts became my thoughts. He knew that I had no real plan, that I was running like a scared rabbit. He spoke. Someone's been practicing black magic on you, son, imposing their dream on your psyche. Who is it? My mother, I said. She wants me to come home and help run the family business. He said, what do you want? I said, well, after college, I, I came down from Wisconsin to Chicago to, with the idea that I was going to break in as a professional actor. That was your dream? Well, my, my college professor, my drama teacher, he, he said that I had such a talent that it would be a shame to waste. The man chuckled. He said, I bet he said to you, I always regretted that I gave up so quickly on my acting career and turned to teaching. I said, yeah, how did you know? He said, don't you see? You've covered up your mother's false dream with this man's false dream. And I failed. Of course you failed, he said. False dreams are nothing, nothing but lies that we agree to. They're destined for failure. Only our own true dream can lead us to freedom. An exit appeared, and, and we took it. He drove up the ramp, back across the expressway, and back down on the other side, now headed north. What are you doing, I said. You know, you're taking me home. He nodded, yes. He said, I want you to get quiet for a while and take yourself to a time and place where you felt such immense joy you never wanted a moment to end. I closed my eyes, and I was a, a young boy sitting in church, immersed in a, a sense of God's goodness, surrounded by the presence of beauty. I was a, a fish swimming in a warm sea of pure love, traveling in a place of perfect peace. I stayed there for a while till I realized we'd crossed the line, the state line, into Wisconsin. He pulled off the interstate onto one of the old state roads that ran north toward my home and into one of those wayside picnic areas. I looked 
out the window and I saw a stand of white birch trees. He looked at me again. He said, the hitching will be easier on this road. Then he put out his weathered hand on my forehead and he said, God, be with you, son. I want you to go home, hug your mother, and tell her nothing but white magic between us from now on. And go find that college professor of yours and tell him what you've learned, that now is always the perfect time to grab hold of your dream. As I stood outside the car, I was refreshed by the scent of nature around me. And as I watched him drive away, I heard a sound above me, and I, and I saw a hawk fly out of those white birch trees across the road and into the woods on the other side. I thought to myself, the same hawk I saw in Chicago? Eh, maybe not, but maybe so. I chose to believe that it was. Thank you, Gary Broman, for bringing the Ford Agreements to life for us. Thank you so much. So appreciative. <sighs> so here we are, friends, finishing up our series, our fall faith series. This is it. We're here at, at the fourth agreement already, which is always do your best. And I've had a wonderful time being part of this collaborative experience. This Wednesday will be our last Zoom class at 7 o'clock for anyone who wants to join us. And I have the honor of sharing on this agreement. So how is everyone doing? Let's do our check-in. Trent will share some slides with us now. Our first agreement was be impeccable with your word. Second one was don't take anything personally. The third is don't make any assumptions, which brings us right here to always do your best. So we have all of those agreements swirling around in our consciousness. So how has it been? How's your journey been? <laughs> it's been fun, hasn't it? Are you not seeing this stuff showing up left and right? <laughs> it's always been there, but you see the difference in us? It's more, it's more in our awareness now. We're recognizing it more. So good for us, yeah? Good for us. So take a breath with me as we start this. <sighs> Someone said last week that, you know, on that third agreement about don't make any assumptions, trying not to make any assumptions is trying to, like, not breathe, right? <laughs> exactly. The mind thinks, right? And it makes judgments and assumptions all the time. But, but what it, our choice is what we do with all of that, isn't it? We have a choice, which, again, leads us into the fourth agreement of always do your best. Now, as soon as you hear that, always do your best. How do you feel? Do you just go, <sighs> feels a little hard at first, doesn't it? Like, oh, really? I have enough on my plate. Do I have to do my best too? Come on. <laughs> well, again, I want you to know, hang on there. So it feels like it's almost an impossibility perhaps, right? But there's good news, friends. As we take this in a little bit deeper, we are going to discover that this fourth agreement of always do your best is good news, and it's not about perfection at all. <laughs> yes, thank God. <laughs> However, it is absolutely all about applying our awareness and these four agreements to the best of our ability at any given moment. Miguel says, under any circumstance, always do your best. No more, no less. But keep in mind that your best is never going to be the same from moment to moment. He says everything is alive and changing at all times. So your best will sometimes be of high quality and at other times not quite as high, right? And we all know that, that many factors influence this, doesn't it? Just for instance, if you get enough rest. Did you sleep good last night? You know, how do we show up and be our best? Are we are at our best when we're rested and energized, of course, right? Not so much if we're feeling tired and depleted. And what about that other acronym for HALT? Hungry, angry, lonely, or tired? That's a setup, isn't it, for us? 
These are red flags for us as individuals in this human condition for us to take notice of what's going on with us. And so if we're in any of those categories, chances are our best is going to be at perhaps a little bit lower of a quality, we might feel. But it does not mean that even in that very moment that that wasn't our best. All right, can you start to feel this? Yes. So he says regardless of the quality, you know, because we got that judgment going on, don't we? But regardless of the quality, keep doing our best. Have you ever started a project or anything like that, barely got started in on it, maybe only halfway through with it, and you're like, oh, the heck with it. I'm over this now. I don't even want to finish it. And you feel start to feel dis de defeated in the, uh, trying to complete it, a little bit feeling like a struggle. And then right behind all that comes, ah, oh, I didn't do a good job at all. I don't like the results. I'm just quitting. It's awful. We don't even bother to complete it. And how does that feel? What starts to move in? Just get a sense of it. I know that we've all left some undone projects, haven't we? <laughs> so as I was preparing this, I started to think about myself, and I thought, you know, there was a time in my life when I wanted to be crafty. Just wanted to. Thought that that was like a good thing to be. Now, you're gonna, as I tell you what I did, you'll get an, a, time, a timeline for this. <laughs> okay. I took a sewing class. I tried cross-stitching. Uh, does anybody ever remember those rugs that you used to make with the hooks and a little bit of yarn? Yep, mm-hmm. I got about that much of that one done. <laughs> yep, mm-hmm, or less. I won't even tell you what happened to the sewing project. <laughs> one sleeve a little longer than the other, you know, all that sort of stuff. But it, it was truly, I was just, I really didn't like any of it. And yet somewhere in my mind, I had made up some agreement that thought it's a good thing to be crafty. And however I determined what crafty is, right, at that point in time. And I didn't finish them, and I did feel bad about it, as you can tell, right? <laughs> and then what I discerned from all this, that the best thing I absolutely did for myself was to leave all that undone and to stop punishing with myself with it, trying to get myself to be something that I really wasn't, wasn't mine to do, much like what Robert was doing, right? Didn't need his mom's dream or his professor's dream, did he? He needed his own dream. We get to show up and be ourselves. That's part of always do your best. Think about that. Think about that. We're not here to do and follow everybody else's dream for us. Take a breath. <sighs> Some of us are saying, wow, I could have heard this message a while ago, huh? <laughs> Miguel says, regardless of the quality, keep doing your best. No more, no less than your best. If you try too hard to do more than your best, you will spend more energy than is needed, and in the end, your best will not be enough. When you overdo, you deplete your body and go against yourself, and it will take you longer to accomplish your goal. But if you do less than your best, you're subject to frustration, self-judgment, guilt, and regrets. Haven't we all had some of those? In the book, Miguel tells a story of a man who wanted to transcend his suffering, so he went to a Buddhist temple to find a master to help him. He went to the master and he asked, Master, if I meditate for four hours a day, how long will it take me to transcend? The master looked at him and said, If you meditate four hours a day, perhaps you will transcend in ten years thinking he could do better. Then the man said, oh, master, what if I meditated eight hours a day? How long will it take me to transcend? The master looked at him and said, if you meditate eight hours a day, perhaps you'll transcend in 20 years. But why will it take longer if I meditate more, the man asked. The master replied, you are not here to sacrifice your joy or your life. You are here to live, to be happy, and to be loved. If you can do your best in two hours of meditation, but you spend eight hours instead, you will only grow tired, miss the point, and not enjoy your life. Do your best. And perhaps you will learn that no matter how long you meditate, you can live, love, and be happy. 
set ourselves free, can't we? When we are doing our best, we feel productive, and we are willing to take action. Moreover, we are taking action because we love it, not because we have to, not because we are simply expecting a reward. Often many are doing the opposite, taking action for the reward and not really enjoying what they're doing at all. Miguel says that's why they have not done their best. We can fall into that mindset of, I have to, and a lot of suffering can come from that place. It won't take you very long to think of this. Can you think of a time in your life when you fell into that trap of thinking, I have to. I'll just do it because I have to. You can think of what the results were, right? How do you feel when you feel obligated to do something that I have to rather than the fact that I am taking action because I want to? Because I want to. Can you see right there which one is doing your best? Many years ago, this brought to my mind, many years ago, it was holiday time, and I had agreed to host my family gathering. I said yes. I said yes. <laughs> I was working full time. I was in ministerial school full time, and I was also helping here at the church. But I said yes. Can you feel the setup? <laughs> I wanted to do this, but clearly I had overestimated my own personal energy level to make it all happen, right? I was breaking agreements left and right, I might tell you. All four agreements multiple times throughout that. <laughs> I said in here, if there had been an, if there had been an award for most, most agreements broken during one occasion, I could have been the recipient. Well, at least I woke up from my dream state at one point, and I thought while I was cooking, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? So I got to, to get clear for just a few moments and say, what are my motives for having my family over? What am I really trying to accomplish here? It's not about how great the table looks. It's not about fixing the perfect dish, right? It's not about taking any of that stuff personally if they don't like the dish you fixed. None of that was it. My motive for all that is what did I really wanted to do, want to do? I wanted to create a space where love could be fostered, where joy could be fostered, where we could be with one another because our families don't get together that much very often anymore. That's what I was trying to do there. The sidebar were the dishes and everything else that we fixed, right? From that place, what happened to me is I woke up. I had some transcendence happen for me. So what did I do? I vividly sat there. I can still remember myself. I was making this dish of ziti. And I'm making that dish. And I said, I want to infuse love into this dish of food. I want it to really represent what my intentions are here. The shift all happened for me. My family, I don't know, ever knew anything about all that, but there was something different that happened for me. I had more than enough energy to do all that was required by me to do, and I did it in love, in happiness, in peace, and in joy, not stuck back over there in have-to land. It was a gift for me. It was a gift for me. And as I was doing that, I, could, I was visualizing, you know, God's love surrounding all of them. I could hear my family members laughing and enjoying themselves. I was energized. I was so grateful for that experience. I did my best because I wanted to. I wanted to. And the results were amazing. We had a wonderful time. And from that space, from those places, when it's something that you want to do because you are consciously making the choice to take that action, that inner judge has no room to work. Can you see that with me? That inner critic in there, it has no room to work in there. Shame, blame, guilt, judgment, it's all taken a back seat, isn't it? My actions were impeccable. I wasn't immersed in trying to do any people pleasing there. It came from what I wanted to do. I got to take that action for the pure joy of it. Miguel says that action is about living fully. Inaction is to deny life. And I believe that what he's saying in this is, is for us to use our gifts, 
that your ideas, your divine ideas that come to you are not meant to be left on a shelf somewhere. They're meant for manifestation. They're meant for us to bring them forward into this world. That's why we receive them. Action. He says God is life and that God is in the action. And the best way to say I love you, God, is to live your life by doing your best. And the best way to say thank you, God, is by letting go of the past and living in this pre present moment right here, right now. And he says in there, whatever life takes from you, let it go. Let it go. This became so clear to me. It was as I was reading this is that we cannot practice this fourth agreement while holding on to the past. Can you see that with me? To always do our best, we must be in this present moment. I heard a speaker once say, stop trying to make your past better. You know, we laugh about it, but haven't we tried to do that? It's an impossibility, friends. Our point of living, our point of power is in this very moment. Living in the past keeps us stuck, keeps us stagnant, and there is no best there. There is no best there. Mostly because, again, it's that judge that's running the show at that point. We're not trying to make our past better because we thought it was great. Are we? I don't think so. We're punishing ourselves someplace back there. Our best never has judgment, never has blame, never has shame, never has guilt attached to it. Miguel says that when we're living that way, it's only being half alive, half alive. And that leads to self-pity, suffering, and tears, he says. That is not of God. That is purely old agreements that we have made creeping in on us and our ego. Doing our best is to enjoy the dream that we are in now, which Gary clearly portrayed for us. You were born with the right to be happy. Can you take that in with me? You were born with the right to be happy. Many of us had old agreements surrounding our consciousness that did not tell us that message, I suspect. We were born to be happy. Doing our best doesn't mean that we're always impeccable with our word, that we never take anything personally again, or that we never make assumptions. But the good news is, is that our awareness is raising and our habits are changing. Haven't you noticed? Yeah, that was me. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. A. We don't expect perfection. This is what I like. He said this. We don't expect perfection. We move towards mastery in a judgment-free way. He says if you do your best always over and over again, you will become a master of transformation. Here's my favorite one. Practice makes the master. Practice makes the master. He says everything that you have ever learned, you have learned through repetition. And this does take action, doesn't it? He says when we honor the four agreements together, there is no way that you will not live in hell. That you won't live in hell. Did I say that backwards? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let me try to do my best on that. <laughs> Just practice the four agreements. <laughs> do your best to honor these agreements, he says. And we know that, that the, this human condition has obstacles, and sometimes it's harder to practice these than others. But it doesn't matter. Those obstacles sometimes are just waiting on us to pull us off track. But we're aware now, right? He says, as the Toltecs teach us, the reward is to transcend the human experience of suffering to become the embodiment of God. I underline that twice, to become the embodiment of God what we're here for friends it's what we're here for we hear it every single Sunday in a thousand different ways but that is the truth of it that is the reward of it and that when we fall we do not judge we simply begin anew it's okay we're going to fall and then we're going to stand up aren't we and we're going to make the agreement again 
that just for today we can begin anew as many times as it takes. We rise, we stumble, we fall. We rise, we stumble, we fall. And it's all okay. So I invite you, dear ones, keep these four agreements close at hand. Write them down somewhere. Look at them daily. Let's not let this just be, oh yeah, okay, they talked about that on Sunday. Okay, next, we'll be coming back here next Sunday to hear. Without any action, they just sit over there once again, right? No, this is practical Christianity, meaning that we practice what we're talking about here. So always do your best. And your best is indeed enough. Be loving, kind, and accepting of yourself. You are God in expression. Today is the beginning of a new dream for you if you choose it. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine. God is blessing you now and always. And so it is. Thank you all. Up my mind to do. I've got a thing inside that I was designed to do, and nothing can hold me back if I don't want it to, because I can do anything I make up my mind to do. Because if I can think, and then I can dream, and what I can dream. I can believe, and when I believe, then I will see oh, I can do anything, anything. I can be anyone that I decide to be. I've got this great big dream growing inside of me, and no one can bring me down. Cause I know what's right for me. Cause I can be anyone that I decide to be. Cause if I can think, and then I can dream. And what I can dream, I can believe. And when I believe, and then I will see. I can be anyone, anyone. Oh, I can do anything I make up my mind to do. I've got a thing inside that I was designed to do. And nothing can hold me back if I don't want it to. Because I can be anyone that I decide to be. That I can be anyone I make up my mind to be Can be anyone I make up my mind to be Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, and it is so.
give it a spin. Oh, please pray with me once again. Indeed, indeed. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this precious time together to have the opportunity to practice the four agreements to raise our awareness that we have been born and created in original goodness, to have the awareness that we are indeed the embodiment of God here on earth, and it is our job to go shine our lights that we have within us. We bless each gift in the giver. We honor each prayer request that is in our prayer box, calling forth the highest and best outcomes for all. Once again, for this precious time together, we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, ladies. And now, if you'll please join me in our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. So we have a treat for all of you. We actually get to stand up now and sing the peace song together. Yes! Everybody's like, wait, what are we supposed to do? Just stand up, sing the peace song. <laughs> okay, no holding hands, just stand. Okay. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God our Creator, we are family. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there 